We're going to take a step back. In this section, we'll continue to cover the use cases of the Behringer Victor module, but we're going to look at it from a higher perspective rather than looking at the details of the Victor. We're asking, how does this fit into an overall system? So previously, what we've been doing is going straight from the output of the Victor into a VCA. Then we've got a little keyboard from which we can control it. And of course, we've got the joystick. Another alternative that I tried was to route it through the traditional subtractive synthesis voice. And that works. You do get some harmonic variation, but with the subtractive synthesis with a low pass filter, it tends to be dull and it can even mask out completely the variations in the upper harmonics. So here is a subtractive voice that's very basic, but it adds a nice bass and we can add in that second voice that's just the Victor through the VCA. It's a very nice combination with a lot of harmonic animation. This use case is using the Victor as a frequency modulation FM source for a 921B oscillator. The idea is that as you change waveforms, the resulting harmonics can get quite complicated and hopefully interesting. I tried this, but the results were not very musically interesting. The problem is that the 921B oscillator has only exponential FM inputs. To create a tonal FM sound like a marimba or a tubular bell which tracks the keyboard, you need a linear FM input. The result with an exponential FM response is that as you increase the amount of FM, the overall pitch increases. With the Victor, as you change waveforms, the pitch will vary in unmusical ways. I've got the Victor running in the audio range. I'm taking the output, it's going into an attenuator. That output is going into the AC mod input of a 921B oscillator. That input, as well as the DC mod input, is an exponential input. And let's listen to why that's a problem. And there you hear the pitch change. And as we change waveforms, it's just a mess. Next, I tried to use the Victor as a low frequency FM input to the 921B oscillator. In order to make it musical, I used a quantizer with a blues minor scale. The result was a melody generator which changed melodies as the joystick position changed. Let's check it out. So we've got our Victor oscillator and we're putting it into a very low frequency mode by not only changing the octave range but also adding a negative voltage to the volt per octave input to drive it down even further. We're taking the output putting it into an attenuator, taking the output of the attenuator and making it the input to the quantizer. The output of the quantizer goes into the 921B pitch input. We're triggering the quantizer from the gate. We're getting the gate from a 921 oscillator. Let's listen to that. 
there are four waveforms. There is silence at the bottom, which is very difficult to dial into, but it is possible. We have a sine wave, a square wave, and a sawtooth wave. So let's listen to the melody generated when we move from silence to triangle. And up toward square. Next, let's add modulation to the y-axis. And we can change the frequency of the victor. or even drive it higher with a positive offset. And we'll change to the X input and that's the demo. I mentioned earlier that there are X and Y outputs for the joystick and they output plus and minus 5 volts. I've set up a voice where the waveforms are the same on all four of the oscillators and there's a slight difference in tuning but the point is that I want to have little change to the oscillator sound as I'm moving this joystick so I can be free to manipulate other components of the system with those two plus and minus 5 volt outputs. I've patched the X output into an attenuator and that output goes to the filter mixer controlling the cutoff frequency. The Y output controls the level of the ADSR, which drives the VCA. So we're controlling volume. So let's listen to that. So that's just one example of what you can do with the joystick by itself. Any control that will accept plus and minus 5 volts as a control signal can be controlled with the joystick. The first program we want to look at is SynthTribe from Behringer. The SynthTribe app will do two things. Number one, send and receive programs from the Victor module to a PC. Number two, update the firmware in the Victor module. This demo will receive a Victor program and save it on the PC. It will also send a PC file back to the Victor module. You could also send receive programs to and from a Pro VS Mini Synth. Prior to recording this video, I had to do some initial setup. I downloaded and installed the Synth Tribe app version 2.7.2 .2 from Behringer.com. I also created a directory to store the Victor programs on my PC. Finally, I connected the Victor module to my PC with a USB cable. I used a USB Type-C connector on the Victor side and a USB Type-A connector on the PC side. In the description, see a link for a tutorial on downloading and installing SynthTribe. Once I opened the SynthTribe app, it automatically detected the connected Victor module. 
On the general page, I select the program I want to receive from the Victor module. I select program 32. Note, as of version 2.7.2, this program select does not work. You must use the Victor oscilloscope menu to select the program you want to transfer. Click the Receive button to transfer the currently selected program on the Victor. At this point, I navigate to the directory I created for the Victor program files. I enter the name and save the file. To send a program from the PC to the Victor module, I click the Send button, I select the file, click Open, and the program is sent. I mentioned that the Receive program pull-down does not work. The Receive will only receive from the current working memory. The send, however, does work. It will send back to both the current working memory and the program slot. I've got program one pulled up. I'm going to restore a super saw sound from a backup, which is a factory program five. And I have sent it, and you can see the saw shape and we'll hear it. And we can also see that it's in the memory slot. We'll go up to two and then back to one to pull it out of the memory slot and play again. So it's in both. Now I'm going to restore the original factory program one. And you can see the waveform changes and we'll listen and we'll go up to program two, listen to that, and then come back to program one and listen to that, and it's not the super saw. So that concludes the section on the Synth Tribe software. I'm sure they'll come up with a fix for this in the near term, so don't forget to continue to update your Synth Tribe software. The next piece of software we want to look at is an editor for the Victor module. You're looking at the Pro VS Mini editor software from Stage Engine. This program will also edit the Victor Eurorack module with some limitations. It is available for both PC and Mac platforms. The pricing model is name a fair price. Look in the description for a link to this software. I don't receive any compensation for providing this link. There are many parameters on the Pro VS Mini that are not on the Victor. As a result, only a dozen parameters can be updated on the Victor with this software. This is actually a limitation of the MIDI implementation on the Victor module. Still, the software is worth considering. Recall the four oscillator menu pages on the Victor. Each oscillator has three parameters that can be edited. We have waveform, frequency in semitones, and fine frequency. And we had those parameters for all four oscillators available on this page. These 12 parameters can also be controlled via MIDI continuous controller messages. See the quick start guide, page 119, for the MIDI CC parameters supported by the Victor. Watch and listen while I update the parameters for oscillator A from the software. First I'll put the joystick to corner A so that we're listening only to oscillator A. Next I'm going to play a sequence as I change from one waveform to another. Also note that I've set the MIDI input to Victor, the MIDI output to Victor, and of course I've got my PC connected to the Victor with a USB cable.
We can change the waveform for oscillator A using the knob and a touchpad or a mouse. We can also use the keyboard up and down arrows to change one waveform at a time. Let's hear that. I'll be hitting the up arrow. And that's a pretty cool effect. Finally, we can change the tuning on the oscillator. I'll set the joystick to the center position as I retune. So that concludes the software review for this video. The Victor module is an interesting VCO with four oscillators, 128 waveforms, 32 programs, and a joystick for real-time mixing. The sonic palette is nearly endless. Add to that the joystick outputs and a budget-friendly price and you have a winner. If you have a Eurorack system that's mostly analog, adding the Victor is a no-brainer. Comparing this to other vector synthesis platforms like the original Korg WaveStation or the newer Korg WaveState, the main feature that's missing is the wave sequence. You can produce that to some extent with the mix envelope, which the WaveStation also had. You can also use MIDI CC messages to create a wave sequence exactly. If you send those MIDI CC messages from a DAW, the sequence can be essentially unlimited in length. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Victor. Thanks for watching the video to this point. Please like and subscribe for more content like this.